Resident Evil 3 Remake has a ton of easter eggs and callbacks to its 1999 counterpart. More than 20 years since the original release, Capcom continues to sneak in references not only to other Resident Evil games, but to other classic titles as well. Let's explore the streets of Raccoon City and see what we can find. After completing the game and earning enough points, you're able to unlock Jill's classic stars uniform she sports in Resident Evil 1, shoulder pads and all. Inside the Raccoon City toy shop, you can find a number of Capcom characters including Arthur from Ghosts and Goblins and Mega Man. Although here, he's styled after the North American box art from the first few games. And while not a Capcom game, these two look suspiciously like the Bubble Bobble Dragons. Several of the city's posters have returned for the remake, including Aquacure, Sarsaparin, and the Big E Band. Several new movie posters have been added, making reference to Top Gun, Alien, Terminator, and even other Capcom games. Speaking of the Alien franchise, Coffee Shop Sigourney can be found in the opening of the game as well, making reference to the Alien actress Sigourney Weaver. As you begin your playthrough as Carlos at the RPD, you'll see zombie Brad Vickers attacking another familiar face just outside the front door, Lieutenant Marvin Branagh. After years of wondering, we finally see how Branagh meets his fate in this scene that takes place just before the events of Resident Evil 2's campaign. Also, you're still able to visit the outdoor corridor where Brad Vickers' poster hangs. Sorry, poster boy. Sitting next to it in a locker is Leon's future RPD uniform. Somebody didn't have time to put his blues on. Like in the Resident Evil 2 remake, we see what we thought might have been Mr. X's hat. But upon closer inspection, it may just be an Arclay Sheriff's hat. Or just a hat. What do you think? If you find all the pieces to complete the Kite Brothers Railway Monument puzzle, you're rewarded with the Power Stones achievement, making reference to, of course, the classic Capcom title. In the opening parts after Jill flees her apartment, you'll end up near a public market resembling the one in Seattle, Washington. When entering the now familiar West Wing of the RPD, you'll see exactly how these two officers lost a fight to a liquor. Way to help out, Carlos. Ever wonder what the hell happened to the men's locker room at the RPD, and why a whole wall had been blown up? Well, Carlos happened. When you make it to the nest as Jill, you come across a terrifying lab full of tyrants and hunters just waiting for their chance to wreak havoc on Raccoon City. Now here's a weird f***ing door! In your time at the RPD, Carlos makes several tongue-in-cheek references to events and items. The funny doors, Leon's awful first day, and some advice that Leon simply ignored. Alright, you want me to keep out? I'll keep out. Oh, and if you're wondering, the locker and safe codes are all the same. So load up! A poster outside of Gun Shop Kendo reveals a concerned citizen who knows a little too much. Someone should be listening to this guy. In one of her nemesis encounters, Jill shouts out one of her most famous lines from the 1999 original. Come on, you creepy-ass stalker! You want stars? I'll give you stars! In Moon's Donuts, the shredding soundtrack you hear is actually the ending to Leon's campaign from the original Resident Evil 2, a tune we missed in the remake. If you notice any other Easter eggs in your playthrough, share them with us here in the comments. Thanks for watching, and remember, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. Yeah.